okay next let's talk about uh, you know how to start training a decision tree okay so in this video we'll start with the basic part and it will take a few bunch of videos so as to cover uh, the entire training process but let's start okay um, so this is now going to be called as a tree induction algorithm one of the popular tree induction algorithms is called as the hunts algorithm okay so in this algorithm the way it works is that you start with the um, you know all the training instances so you have uh, you know to start with 10 different training instances okay and uh, uh, you know of course you want to predict whether uh, this guy cheats or not while filing tax return okay uh, now in building a tree you have to basically start from the root node so you have to first figure out uh, you know what do you want to start with in the sense at the root what particular attribute do you want to split on and do you want to split or not of course in general you want to do at least one root node building right and further you know after you have built the root node these uh, 10 instances would either go to the left side or go to the right side from that root node okay so for example you know let's see how hunts algorithm works and then we can come back to this explanation okay so if you look at these 10 instances right uh, you know if you look at the uh, root node uh, if i don't have any root node you know if i am just making a very trivial decision tree and i have to sort of predict hey give me a prediction you know build a function which basically uh, just returns uh, whether this guy is going to cheat or not okay? uh, so well in an em empty decision tree or in a trivial decision tree uh, one thing that i can surely do is that i observe out of 10 actually seven of them don't cheat okay? and therefore i can i mean you know the worst thing that i can do is uh, the function contains nothing it just contains return don't cheat okay? as simple as that at least i'm 70 percent of the times i'm correct right uh, although it's a dumb classifier but well it's a classifier right? it basically is a, it's a function which always returns no or don't cheat okay now i can go one level better one level you know uh, i can make a better classifier as follows so i can start with uh, you know using some attribute to split and create a root node okay uh, let's say i split on the refund attribute okay and uh, you know if i split on the refund attribute uh, i get two different branches because hey refund takes two values yes or no okay so on the left side, um, you know, all those instances which have refund equal to yes, they go on the left side. All the instances which have refund equal to no, they go on the right side. So if you notice, uh, you know, uh, in this particular uh, data set of 10 different instances, um, there are four instances where refund equal to yes. Okay. One, four, seven. Uh, also, there, there are only three different instances, sorry, right? One, four, and seven. Okay. Now, whenever refund equal to yes, if you notice the class, the, the cheat column is no. So essentially, you know, in one, four and seven, the cheat column is no. Okay. So therefore, when I say refund equal to yes, this part I can safely mark as don't cheat. And, you know, I can actually, uh, you know, create that as a decision node because, uh, hey, whenever refund equal to yes, cheat is always no. So, you know, I call these nodes as pure nodes. So while this kind of a node in the trivial tree was an impure node because hey, if I thought, uh, you know, if I don't split at all, the entire data set, 70% are no's and 30% are yeses or, you know, seven of them are no's and three of them are yeses. And therefore this was an impure node. But if I think about the left node in this uh, new kind of tree, okay, where there is a split on refund. So, you know, all three of those instances are, 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 are no's, right? Therefore, this is, a, this, is a pure, this is a pure node. It's not a mix of labels, right? It's not a mix of no's and yeses, okay? Uh, and uh, then when I talk about refund equal to no, if I look at instances where refund is no, okay? Well, there are seven of them. So there were total 10 instances. So three of them went on the left side, seven of them went on the right side, okay? So now of those seven, if I notice, you know, uh, instance number two, three, five, six, eight, nine, and 10. Of those seven, if I notice three of them are yeses, four of them are no's, okay? That's a mix, okay? Therefore, this particular, uh, this particular child node, the right child node is actually an impure node, okay? Uh, I want to split this further, you know, impure nodes, usually you want to split further. Pure nodes, there is no point splitting. You have already made a decision. Why would you want to split anyway? So therefore, pure nodes, you don't want to split. Impure nodes, you keep splitting further. Okay. Uh, now, but you, if you think of it, in the right side child, which is an impure node, 
uh, what you have is seven instances. You know, at the at the top, at the root node, you had ten instances to begin with. Three of them went to the left side. Seven of them came to the right side. Okay. So on this right hand side node, there are seven instances. Now, what do you want to do? You want to basically decide again, what can I split on? Let's say I chose marital status to split on. Okay. And that gives me a, a tree which has grown further. So, you know, uh, I mean, of course, the left part doesn't change at all. The left part is the same. The right part, I split on marital status. Now, you might uh, basically think, hey, marital status takes three values. I could have created three children. Why did I create two only? Now, it turns out that decision trees can be binary decision trees or they can actually be multi-way decision trees. Okay? Usually binary decision trees are preferred because if you do multi-way decision trees, it can happen that the decision trees can become very bushy in nature. Okay? And when decision trees become bushy in nature, each of those paths actually, um, takes, uh, actually gets to see only a very few number of instances if you are total data site size is very small. Okay. This causes problems. This causes low accuracy overall. Technically, it can lead to overfitting. Okay. And uh, which we will understand later uh, anyway. Right. And that is why basically, uh, you know, um, binary decision trees are more popular than multi-way decision trees. Okay. So now if I have to do a binary split, I must, uh, you know, somehow group uh, two things together on one branch and like single and divorce together on one branch and married on the other branch. Okay. Why did I combine single and divorce together right? and not single and married together or divorced and married together and so on. Okay. Uh, we will talk about that question later, but that's so important and a very valid question. We'll talk about that later. Okay. But what is more important right now is to notice that whenever there are impure nodes, right? For example, this one, the right hand side node in the, uh, for the refund attribute, those impure, impure nodes are the ones where we do more splits. Okay? Now here, you know, at this marital status node, there were total seven instances. Remember, because the three went to the left side, so seven came here. Now of these seven, uh, you know, some of them go on the single or divorced path, left child, and some of them go on the right side basically on the right child, on the married part. Okay. Um, let's see how many of them go where. Okay. So remember, uh, we have to look for rows where refund is, uh, you know, refund is yes. Okay. Uh, refund is no, sorry, right? Because refund is already no. And marital status is married. So remember there were seven here. So of them, how many are married? Okay. So if you look at instance number two, okay. then you look at instance number six, and you look at instance number nine. Those are the ones which go to the right child. Okay. Those are the ones where uh, you know, marital status is married okay. and defund is no. So there are three of those. So it turns out three of those come here, four of those go in the single or divorced bucket. Okay. Now let's see those three. So instance number two, instance number six, and instance number nine. Okay. If you look at their class labels, two is no, six is also no, and nine is also no. So fortunately, all three are no. Okay. Which basically means I can safely choose the decision as don't cheat here. Okay. Uh, the nice part is, uh, you know, I can just choose don't cheat here and uh, this is a pure node because it's not a mix at all. Okay. While on the left side, if I look at it, well, there are four of those which go on the left side. Okay. And take your time, figure out, you know, that the four that go on the left side, three of them are yeses and one of them is actually no. Okay. Three of them. You know, specifically instance number 5, 8, and 10 are yeses, okay? And uh, if you think of it, uh, you know, instance number 3 is the only thing which is no, okay? Well, the majority is still yeses, and therefore I, I mark this as cheat, but, you know, this is an impure node. I have to split it further, okay? Because there are three yeses uh, and one no, okay? And therefore I split it further. So all impure nodes need to be split further until you meet pure nodes and call them as decision nodes anyway. Okay, so I split further on the taxable column attribute. I get these two nodes and, uh, you know, fortunately these are both pure nodes and that is why I can stop. Okay, so that's how Hunt's algorithm works. Okay, now let's look at the description of the Hunt's algorithm. Okay, let DT be a set of training records that reach a node T. Okay, now, you know, now you can understand what it's, what it means by number of training records that reach a training node T. So at this training, at this node, there were 10 records, right? 
um, you know at uh, now now when we want to further split on the right child there are seven records only okay further when you wanted to split uh, uh, this left child of marital status there were only four records and so on so at any node you know let dt be the number of training records that reach a particular node t okay uh, now the general procedure is if dt contains records that belong to the same class okay. same class yt basically saying if if that particular node is a pure node right then you don't need to split further basically you just call it a leaf node and label it as yt okay so in our case yt could be cheat or don't cheat okay so essentially saying yes or no okay so if the node was pure node we did not split further basically just called it a leaf node or a decision node and labeled it with the, with cheat or don't cheat depending on whatever uh, whatever the instances belong to okay, whatever class the instances belong to okay. on the other hand if dt contains records that belong to more than one class so it's a mix of records right for example three yes is one no or three yes is four no's and so on okay. uh, then you need to use attribute test split to do the split and uh, split the data into smaller subsets right so most of the times binary subsets so basically two children left child and the right child okay and lastly you know when you do a split you need to recursively apply the procedure to each subset to both the left node and the child and the right node you know you need to check again are can they be leaf nodes or should they be split further and so on okay that's the general structure of the hunts algorithm it's a recursive algorithm you know it starts at the root node splits i mean of course all decision trees at least have the root node and therefore you have to split at the root node further you want to split or not will really depend on whether your children are pure or not okay if the children nodes are pure like the left child on the refined attribute here you don't split but the children are impure you basically do more and more splits and therefore grow the full tree as as seen on the slide okay now this is the basic structure of the hans algorithm that's great right uh, but there are of course so many questions to answer why did we choose refund at the top right why did we not split on marital status at the top right. then you know why did we group single and divorced in one bucket and married in the other bucket okay why did we choose to split on this number 80000 who gives this number 80k right why 80k why not 75k why not 100k and so on okay so those are all the questions that we want to answer okay so uh, you know uh, and we'll answer them one by one in the next video okay uh, but uh, that is all for this video so in the next video we will basically see uh, you know how do you choose attributes to split on and uh, you know what kind of splits do you do so if you have chosen to only do binary splits how do you decide what should be the two sides and so on so we'll answer them in the next few videos but uh, that's all about this video